5.1 practice problems. The oxidation of nitrous, uh, nitrogen monoxide produces nitrogen dioxide as represented by the chemical equation shown above. The initial concentration of nitrogen monoxide and oxygen are shown in the table above. The changes in concentration of nitrogen monoxide as a function of time are shown in the following graph. Which graph best represents the changes of concentration of oxygen and why? So as we are reacting the nitrogen monoxide with the oxygen, we should see that um, we are reducing at approximately uh, half that of the uh, nitrogen monoxide since we need two nitrogen monoxides per every oxygen. So looking at my example graphs, we start at a little bit um, below 0.003. And um, by the time that we are at 100, we are at 0 0.0005. So we should be at about half of that in our example graph, uh, just due to the um, ratio that we are dealing with. So both graphs do start at the appropriate initial concentration of the oxygen. However, at time 100, we are at almost the exact same concentration as we started with on graph two, whereas we are at approximately half the concentration that we are at um, um, for nitrogen monoxide for graph one. So graph one is definitely going to be my choice, and then I just need to choose the correct rationale for why graph one is my choice. So I'm gonna eliminate option C and D. Uh, graph one, because the rate of oxygen consumption is half the rate of nitrogen monoxide it consumes, so two molecules of nitrogen monoxide for each oxygen that reacts. That sounds reasonable. That's pretty, pretty close to what uh, we said. Uh, then graph one, because uh, oxygen molecules are consumed at a slower rate at the beginning of the reaction um, when there are not as many molecules of nitrogen dioxide present. Um, that does not make any sense we are just producing or utilizing about half as much of the uh, nitrogen or oxygen as uh, the nitrogen dioxide monoxide. So option choice A. The initial reaction, uh, the initial rate of formation for carbon dioxide from the chemical reaction presented by the equation above was studied in two separate experiments. The table above provides the experimental conditions used. If both experiments are carried out with finely powdered samples of the solid and 50 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, which experiment, if any, will have the faster initial rate of formation of carbon dioxide and why? So um, we are dealing with um, calcium carbonate reacting with the um, hydrogen ion coming off of the hydrochloric acid in producing the carbon dioxide. We have the same uh, uh, we have the same mass of calcium carbonate for both and we get the same volume of hydrochloric acid for both. However, uh, the initial concentration of hydrochloric acid is going to be stronger in experiment two and so I'm going to be able to increase the rate of reaction since I have uh, more uh, hydrogen ions um, to uh, react. So I'm going to get rid of anything that says that experiment one is going to win or that they will be the same. And that leaves me just with option choice C where carbon dioxide will be formed faster at a faster rate in experiment two because of the more hydrogen uh, ion particles can react per unit of time. When the chemical reaction nitrogen monoxide and oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide is carried out under certain conditions, the rate of disappearance of nitrogen monoxide is five times 10 to the negative fifth uh, uh, moles, uh, molarity per second, okay? Um, what is the rate of disappearance of oxygen under the same conditions? So um, again, we have two to one as our uh, ratio here. So if this is how much of the nitrogen monoxide is disappearing, then half of uh, that is how much oxygen should be disappearing. Uh, so that is going to be option choice A.
Because two molecules of nitrogen monoxide are consumed per molecule of oxygen, the rate of disappearance of oxygen is 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth uh, molar uh, per second. Which of the following is the most likely uh, is most likely to increase the rate of the reaction present, uh, represented above? So, um, increasing concentration of either of our uh, reactants is going to uh, increase the rate of the reaction and push the reaction more toward uh, the completion of the reaction. Um, so definitely removing is not going to help. I don't see um, heat on either side of my reaction error, so I don't actually know uh, from this if this is something that requires heat um, or is producing heat. So changing the temperature is not going to help me a lot. Um, increasing the volume of the reaction vessel. Um, again, uh, increasing the volume means that they have more space between the molecules, so they are less likely to collide and therefore less likely to react, so that's not great. However, adding a heterogeneous catalyst to the reaction system is a great way to increase the rate of reaction. If we can't increase the concentration of either of our reactants, adding a catalyst which will uh, lower the amount of energy that is required for the reaction to occur in the first place and therefore making it more favorable is a great way to uh, increase the rate of reaction. C2H4 is reduced by hydrogen in the presence of solid platinum catalyst as represented by the equation above. Factors that could affect the rate of reaction include which of the following? Changes in the partial pressure of hydrogen, uh, changes in the particle size of the platinum catalyst, changes in the temperature of the reaction system. So um, we are going to uh, look at all of these and uh, increasing the uh, or sorry, increasing or decreasing the partial pressure of hydrogen uh, means that we are going to be um, increasing or decreasing the concentration or we are changing the size of the vessel, therefore affecting um, how many uh, collisions are happening and therefore how many reactions are happening. So that is definitely an option for something that could um, affect the rate of reaction. So anything that does not include option one is going to be eliminated. Changes in the particle size of the platinum catalyst. If the platinum catalyst uh, particle size is too large and can't uh, effectively interact with and then decrease the uh, amount of energy that is required for the reaction because it is too large, something like that, um, that is going to affect the rate of reaction. So two should also be included. So I'm going to eliminate the option choices that don't involve two. And then uh, changes in the temperature of the reaction system. The temperature is going to uh, affect how much energy those individual particles have. And again, we don't have information about whether this is um, endothermic or exothermic. However, um, we do know that the overall energy of the system is going to affect how, uh, how often those molecules are colliding and therefore how often they are reacting with each other. So option choice E is the only one that has all three present, so option choice E is going to be my best choice. In the titration experiment of hydrogen peroxide reacts with uh, manganese, uh, perm permanganate, pit, as represented by the equation above. The dark purple potassium permanganate solution is added from a burette to the colorless acidified solution of um, hydrogen peroxide in an Erlenmeyer flask. At a certain time during the titration, the rate of appearance of oxygen was one times 10 to the negative third moles per liter per second. Uh, what is the rate of disappearance of uh, permanganate at that time? So we are looking at the uh, relationship between uh, oxygen and the permanganate so um, I am going to have a relationship of five to two. So um, if I want to figure out how much this is, so one times 10 to the negative third, and then my relationship is uh, five oxygens per every two uh, permanganates, uh, then I'm going to uh, 
divide by 5 multiply by 2. So 1e negative 3 times 2 divided by 5 gives me uh, 4 um, times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. Um, thing to note here is that these numbers are very small. Okay. We did get the same um, number here just with a different exponent. So you do have to be very careful. Um, since we are dividing by a larger number, we are going to be um, increasing our overall exponent to that of negative four rather than keeping it at negative three. So just be very careful that you are um, making sure that your exponents are uh, correct. A kinetics experiment is set up to collect the gas that is generated when a sample of chalk consisting primarily of solid calcium carbonate is added to the solution of um, ethonic acid. Uh, the reaction between the calcium carbonate and ethonic acid is determined by measuring the volume of the gas generated at 22 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere as a function of time. Which of the following exper uh, experimental conditions is most likely to increase the rate of gas production? So um, increasing the rate of gas production, we can add more of the reactant. Um, we can, uh, yeah, it's mostly uh, adding, adding more of the reactant or making um, the reactants more readily available. So decreasing the volume is not adding more of that reactant, not gonna help. Decreasing the concentration is decreasing the amount of the reactant, that's not gonna help. Decreasing the temperature at which the experiment is performed, uh, probably not going to help just because, um, again, temperature is a indirect measure of the energy of the particles, and therefore, if we decrease the energy of the particles, we are also decreasing the rate of collision and therefore decreasing the uh, chances that we have for us to react. However, decreasing the particle sizes of the calcium carbonate by grinding it into a far fine powder does increase our rate of reaction just because we have more opportunity, more surface area of the calcium carbonate to be hit by the uh, other reactant there and therefore we can react more readily. A 0.35 gram sample of lithium is placed in an Erlenmeyer flask containing 100 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius. A balloon is placed over the mouth of the flask to collect the hydrogen gas that is generated. Um, which of the following changes will most likely increase the rate of reaction between lithium and the water? So um, if we are going to uh, be increasing the rate of reaction, uh, we can increase the amount of our reactants or increase the viability of those reactants. Uh, using 125 milliliters of water instead of 100 milliliters of water, uh, potentially, technically, uh, could could help, but let's see what else we got. Uh, using 0.25 grams of lithium instead of 0.35, that's decreasing our reactant, that's not gonna help. Using a 0.35 gram sample of lithium that is cut into small pieces, that is going to increase the surface area of that lithium and therefore increase the amount of water that can hit the lithium and react. Um, per unit of time. So that's definitely more helpful than just increasing the amount of water, uh, assuming that the lithium piece is the exact same size. Decreasing the water temperature before adding the lithium, um, that is going to decrease the amount of energy that the water has to hit the lithium and react with the lithium, so that's not great. So option choice C, um, even though both option choice A and B increase our uh, amount of reactant that is present, the reduction of particle size for lithium is going to be more helpful uh, than just increasing the overall amount of water that we have present. Relatively slow rates of chemical reactions are associated with which of the following? So slow uh, chemical reactions mean that uh, it's not particularly favorable. Um, they're happy in their current situation. Uh, they have a lot of stickiness in between the molecules or uh, yeah, just really, they are already kind of happy with what is going on and um, aren't looking to change. So the presence of the catalyst uh, not going to happen, that is going to increase the rate of reaction. So um, that would be the opposite of its, of its job. High temperature typically is going to increase the rate of reaction just because we are also um, 
increasing the speed at which those molecules can uh, collide. High concentration of reactants, typically again, uh, going to increase the rate of reaction. Uh, if we have more of those particular molecules, then they are going to come into contact with each other more, therefore uh, reacting with each other more. Strong bonds in the reactant molecules, uh, that means that they are going to be pretty happy with where they currently are. They are attracted to their current bond mates. They are not looking to um, break those strong bonds and form new ones. So that's a good, good potential answer. And then finally, finally, we have low activation energy. That means it's really easy to start the reaction. Um, so that's going to be the opposite of what we would actually be experiencing, which would be a high activation energy. So strong bonds in the reactive molecules is going to be our best reason for why uh, react reactions don't occur very speedily, because they already are very attracted to who are who they are currently bonded with. Uh, two samples of magnesium in, uh, of equal mass are placed in equal amounts of hydrochloric acid contained in two separate reaction vessels. Particle representations mixing magnesium and hydrochloric acid in the two reaction vessels are shown in figure one and figure two above. Water molecules are not included for the particle representations. Which of the following reactions will initially proceed faster and why? So between these two um, particle diagrams, we have a large chunk of the magnesium here where um, we really can only make contact with the outermost edges of the magnesium uh, rather than uh, access a large surface area of the magnesium versus in figure Two, we have uh, much smaller pieces, and so we are able to uh, gain access to substantially more of the magnesium atoms at the same time uh, because their surface area is so much larger. So I'm going to be looking for an answer choice that says that um, figure two is going to give me a faster rate of reaction because um, I have a, a larger surface area or that more of the magnesium atoms are going to be exposed. So I'm going to get rid of any option choices that tell me that figure one is going to go faster. Then I'm going to compare these two. The reaction in figure two, because more magnesium atoms are uh, exposed to the hydrochloric acid in figure two than figure one. That is uh, true. And then the reaction in figure two, because magnesium in figure two has less surface area than in magnesium in figure one. That is the opposite. Um, we have a higher surface area, and therefore we are exposing more magnesium atoms to the hydrochloric acid than we were in figure one. <laughs>